Welcome to the Freedom CEO Podcast. It's about becoming the chief decision maker over your life in order to step into a life of freedom. From business, health, wealth, charity, and giving back to just doing life on your own terms. I am your host, Shay Invidiata. I am an award-winning activist, change maker, and a multifaceted impact entrepreneur with over a decade of experience in business, philanthropy, and health and wellness. In this space, I'm going to be bringing you insights, not just from me, but from incredible thought leaders around the globe to help you start making decisions towards living a life of freedom so you can live a life you love. Are you ready, guys? Because we are going all in. Today's episode is going to get you thinking and questioning how you are operating in your life. I sat down with naturopathic doctor, certified sports nutritionist, strength and conditioning specialist, Deanna Rose, who is also the founder of Wealth Inc., Deanna helps ambitious entrepreneurs heal the gut and realign their body and mind so that you can create a functional body and tap into your inner wisdom to become limitless in your business and personal life. Rooted in functional and integrative nutrition and medicine, Deanna designs programs for high-performing entrepreneurs who want their problems solved with minimal time and effort. In today's conversation, Deanna is going to tell you how to release the true power your human body holds while being the superhuman entrepreneur you already are. Get ready. We are going to activate your potential, reconnect you with your inner wisdom, and bulletproof your body to live a life on your own terms. We met at F45 when she would continue to encourage me to push myself beyond my limits, always with a beautiful smile, with great encouragement. And now I have been watching her be around the globe as this incredible entrepreneur and living her best life, creating this freedom that you can see. And she's just the perfect woman to be bringing on to the Freedom CEO podcast to share some secrets and value. I call her D. You may <laughs> see her as Deanna. D, I'm so happy to have you here today. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Shay. And also congratulations on your new podcast. This is super exciting. I've listened to every episode. I love everything you do. Thank you. Well, I'm, you know, it's about time in some ways, you know, part of my um, joy that I really get is sharing other people's journeys, their stories, but also like that wisdom. And especially today when we live in like a social media world, where we're always like showing, showing up, I think, you know, what we want the world to see. And sometimes podcast gives that ability to pull back behind the scenes and go, what's really going on behind that post? And what are some of those struggles? What are some of the hard things? And as you know, as an entrepreneur, you don't get there without those roadblocks, without the hardships, without the crying, (laughs) without the struggle. (laughs) You know, and I did. I met you years ago in Toronto at F45 and you were you were obviously still like in fitness and similar to like what you're doing right now. But I've watched you grow and really create such a cool and unique brand, which I really think can help people like me. (laughs) I'm going to let you share but he loves to hang out with entrepreneurs who have shot adrenals and are stressed out to help them regain balance in their body, in their fitness, even in their nutrition mindset, all of this good stuff. So D, would you share with us, what are you up to right now? You're tuning in from Colombia, mm-hmm. but tell us like, what are you doing right now on your journey? Um, first of all, the love is mutual. I think we inspire each other. You've always inspired me and, you know, everything that you do with, you know, the advocacy you do and everything is super, super inspiring. Um, with myself, I mean, I, I think, like you said, the journey has been interesting to say the least as every single entrepreneurial journey that everyone goes through. And 
I remember when I was a kid, um, I was actually born and raised in China and I moved to Vancouver when I was 13. Um, and my parents moved. And so of course they brought me with them and, um, didn't speak a word of English when I first moved and went into this world of people who speak a different language and not knowing, you know, what was what, but, um, I used to travel a lot when I was a kid. My mom used to take me to different places. And when we moved to Vancouver in Canada, I remember just this resistance to, to learning English and wanting to speak English. But there was this, this um, feeling of wanting to explore the world more, even as a 13 year old, you know, really wanting to um, think differently and be different because yeah because I start looking at, you know, how people were in China, how people were in Canada at the time when I was a kid. And I, in my head, I remember the moment where I was like, there has to be something different about, you know, people. And then, so as I got older and older and older, I started to explore different avenues of, you know, what, what am I here to do as an individual? What is my purpose? And this is all before I even discovered, you know, spirituality, personal development, personal growth, like all of that stuff. And um, I, it, growing up, I always had this really, really um, intense passion for mental health. And that's actually what I went to school for. Because I came from a a family. It's, I mean, I, I know everybody's family's crazy, but my family's pretty crazy. Uh, we all have our, you know, crazy families, and uh, no. there are a few. Um, there are a few people in my family who's got mental health issues. So that's always been my my thing. So you know, and so part of that is tapping into the parts of ourselves beyond what we know. And so, yeah, so I went into school for psychology, became a counselor, was working for the government. And then again, realizing that this is not it. This is, there's mm -hmm. way more beyond what we see. There's way more beyond what I've been told to go to school, get a job, have good, you know, in Canada, we, we know as, you know, having good, uh, what is it called? Benefits, right? Mm -hmm. We want to have pension. We want to have security. We want to have this this package that we know that will have security when we're 60, but I'm 20. I don't, I don't need to, you know, slave my entire life for 40 years just so I can have some sort of pension when I'm 60. Right. So, um, and I looked into naturopathic medicine because I wanted to heal the mind through the body. And part of that was luckily for the facility that I worked at, which uh, the food was absolute crap. And I wouldn't even feed it to my dogs, but and I, so, and I start, you know, noticing patterns in the people that I was working with. So I was working with, you know, murders, with people who had um, severe mental health issues, violent, you know, really, um, I don't want to say this, but the worst of the worst mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And they were being sedated by the, by the medication, the the essentially lack of exercise, all these different things that are not conducive to the healthy development of a human being. Right. So I started looking into different things and like, this can't be just it. So natural naturopathic medicine kind of slid his way into my life and, um, started looking into it really resonated. And, uh, my grandma used to work in medicine as well. So in Eastern and Western medicine. So a lot of that was passed on to me in my family. And so I recognize, you know, this is something that I really connected with. Mm -hmm. I went into it and realizing that that wasn't something that I was looking for. And, um, and I didn't see myself sitting in a clinic, you know, eight, 10 hours a day being cranky, um, ha not having sunlight and, you know, it, it wasn't an environment that I wanted to work in. And I didn't want to face people that way either. Because if I'm cranky, then my patient doesn't get the care that they deserve. So right. nobody's happy here. It's a yeah. lose-lose situation. <laughs> so, and then this, this sense of, you know, adventure and travel came in mind. And then that's when actually the pandemic hit. So pandemic hit and I was sitting at home. I'm going, okay, I'm not going to work in a clinic. Mm-hmm. I can't go anywhere because I'm locked in. So 
So I started working on my business. I started thinking about, you know, how can I be remote? How can I um, have this freedom of, you know, location of time of what I want to do, making my own choices in my own life. And, um, and I had a couple of friends who just happened to move to Mexico in 20, uh, 2021, they were you know, talking about it. So I told my boyfriend, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go. And everybody thought I was just joking. Everyone's like, no, you're crazy. You're not going to do it. So I was like, after this, I'm going to go. So I literally packed my bags. I didn't know anything about the visa, about how long I could stay. I got to the border in Mexico and they're like, you need to have a return flight back to your country. So I literally booked a flight to San Jose <laughs> in the Cancun airport. I was like, okay, here it is in six months, I'm gonna fly out. And then so got into the country, had no idea where I was. Um, and then that's everything, that's when everything unfolded beautifully and in a way that I was least expected in a way that um, it's almost like, you know, the universe planned it and the universe is like, you know, just, just jump. Well, yes. send help. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, so I stayed for six months in Mexico, went back to Toronto because I love Toronto summers. It's beautiful. Went back. And then uh, this year I was in Mexico, or actually 2022, the tail end of it, I went back to Mexico for a few months. And then I came to Colombia for a few months. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and I think I'm, this is something I'm going to do is, uh, you know, half a year in Toronto and then the other half go somewhere else that really allows my growth and expansion of my businesses as well as um, my personal growth and development. That was a long rant, but uh. no, no, it's great. And it, what I think is beautiful is that it, it, you are sharing the real process of what actually happens, you know, like there's usually this internal struggle of like, I need to make money. We all need to make money. And that's like a good thing. It's a healthy thing. If you've got a healthy relationship with money and then it's trying to bridge this gap between also the life that you want to be living so that whether you're currently trading time for money, at least you're doing it in an area that you want to be doing it in, in an environment you want to be in. And then as that starts to unfold more, you start thinking, how can I stop trading my time for money? How can I duplicate myself? How can I create passive income? You know, and and that's the next step. Mm -hmm. So I want to I would love to ask you when you landed in Cancun, when you landed in Mexico, the business you wanted to take online, had that birthed yet? Yeah, so uh the interesting thing i don't know i think this makes a good story so in toronto the pandemic lockdown was i remember this date so clearly because i had pre-planned my launch uh back in january in 20 in 2020 and i was like i'm gonna launch on march 26th and i was training a client on march 16th and the toronto government was like we're locking down as this afternoon and i was in my head i was like and I would assume that I should, I can't swear. So I was like, crap, I, oh my God, (laughs) I'm launching in 10 days. What is happening? (laughs) So it had, it it did launch. It was, uh, I think maybe a year, a year into uh, my business. Yeah. Okay. And so, and this is, correct me if I'm wrong, is this Glow and Tonic Studio? So that, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go so the glow and tonic is actually my second business the okay. wealth by deanna rose is actually the first um okay. yeah yeah okay so you launch launching that and at that time when you were launching your business was the plan then for it to be in-person work that you were just launching your business or was there already that online component to it it was always going to be online um yeah the old crap moment was everybody's panicking, everyone's in fear, nobody's going to want to focus on themselves, their health. And I'm going to be scrambling and thinking about pandemic, you know, uh, issues with my health business. (laughs) Yes. My goodness. And like, fast forward, not even that much later, like going into April, 
even yeah. of 2020. And what a gift that you had all of this work prepared. You were ready to launch. You launched at the beginning of COVID and health became the most important thing for most of us, yeah. you know, and, and also mentally. And you do, you speak a lot about that, not just having a body connection, but like mind body connection and mindset for yourself. And that is really the first step to becoming healthy is changing what's happening up in your mind and changing your thoughts. So, I mean, you love this term and I want to, um, I want to share this with everybody. If you hang out on Dee's Instagram, which I'm going to link it up everywhere in the show notes, you can see if you are watching, you can click on uh, or note it on the screen and be sure to follow her because you've got this incredible phrase that I think you coined around releasing release the human in the superhuman. Where did this come from for you? It came when I was meditating one day. Right? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. That sounds cheesy at all. Um, many things come to me when I meditate uh, as, as most do. Um, because as entrepreneurs, yourself included is we're so driven and we we can multitask like no other and we need yeah. to be multitaskers mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs and essentially we're when you know you're so driven and you can do so many things at the same time what the average human would look at us and say well you're a superhuman is because we're so versatile we have so much talent skills we've you know we have this thick skin, this hard shell. We, we, we go through things. We're so resilient. But at the end of the day, I think where the power lies is the human part of us. It's, you know, and this is why I think AI will never be able to replace us because they're not human. Right. And the beauty of us being human is the human component is we have the ability to change our reality. We have the ability to manifest. We have the ability to create our future. And all of these amazing things is basically at our fingertips is we can tap into it and become even better than being a superhuman. We can be human and be really freaking good at it. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. I love that. It's so beautiful. And it's, you know, it's so, it's a very powerful reminder because, you know, again, I mentioned earlier about like Instagram and what people, what we want people to see. And that's usually the better side, right? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, obviously there's great people on there that, you know, they're crying and they're stressed and they're telling you and they're showing you and like, and that's great. But for the most part, it's like what we see on Instagram, we have to remind ourselves, they don't usually look like that, that their skin's not as smooth, their body is not like that, the life is not as happy, like, right, we all, and we all do it to an extent, right, showing, showing the best parts of us. But what makes us human as well is the contrast to all of that and giving yourself permission to show up real raw and life isn't always rainbows and so there are days where it is not happy and it's hard and it's sad or you feel that you've taken so many steps back you know even i think of like your clientele that you would work with where you have a goal that you're working towards and we all know a goal is not a straight path it is a very <laughs> like diagonal backwards, frontwards, circles, how many times you feel like you're going around in a circle and to dismiss that. Right. And I think that's like where you're, you put on this mask, this hard shell, like you're saying, you have to be so tough. You have to only look a certain way, this superhuman. We forget that it's actually the contrast of that, that makes us human. Mm -hmm. And when you say about around AI, not being able to replace us, that's what made me think of it because that's really the goal of AI is around control and perfection and advancements, doing everything better. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if they can never have the contrast of screwing up, falling down, needing to try again, needing to sit and like sit in meditation and wait for that download of creativity, that download of thought, because it's already plugged in for them. Yeah, they, they will never be what we are, 
which is so valuable, you know, and it's part of what I like love about your work is you bringing, wanting to repair and bring back into balance, like that, which has been completely overburnt and depleted. Um, and I wanted to ask you this because there's, as you know, you're in the fitness industry you're in the wellness industry and in the nutrition industry, heavily saturated. And there's a specific type of coach, nutritionist, fitness personnel for every type of niche right out there. You can find that person. You have narrowed in on wanting to work specifically with entrepreneurs that are in overdrive, stressed, um, you know, doing the daily grind and wanting them to return to their baseline and having that restorativeness within self. Why'd you choose them? Why'd you choose people like me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I am you. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, because I am you. And, you know, and I think, and then going back to what you said before is we put up this front, right, is because there are three things that as humans we need is safety, control, validation. Everything we do fall into those three categories yeah. when we have those three things within ourselves already, but we're always seeking it from external sources. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as you said before, is everyone is looking perfect, polished on social media. I'm at fault for that too. Sometimes I'm like, I don't think people want to look at me when I just get out of bed. So I need to put some stuff on my face. Um, but you know, it's, we're all at fault for that. But I think people, what people forget is the girls who have, you know, flaunting their abs on Instagram, the girls who look amazing on, you know, on, on Instagram myself, I'm saying, this is what you need to do mm -hmm. to get yourself out of burnout. I get sick. I cry. Yeah. I sometimes get to the verge of burnout. I'm like, whoa, 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 I got to pull myself back. And I still go through that. In med school, though, I was burning out every other week. So that was a different story. Sure. So, you know, I've just, it's, and this is what I say about stress management is stress management, managing your stress doesn't mean that you have no stress. It just means that you're better at coping with stress. Your threshold when it comes to, you know, dealing with stress goes up higher because you have the tools, you have, you know, all these different um, things that you build within yourself to manage that stress. Same thing with burnout. Same thing with me is I recognize the signs. I recognize the early signs. I recognize, you know, these are the things that I need to do to pull myself back before I go too far. So mm -hmm. I'm exactly like you. I just got the tools. <laughs> I got the recognition. I got the awareness. And not, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not saying the people out there, they don't. It just is the, the, the little things that, you know, you start to notice when you're in this industry. Mm -hmm. So just like you, you know, you're in real estate. There are things that I might know as, you know, a, a bigger picture type of thing, but you know, the little things that industry experts know that I don't. Right. So it's, um, yeah, I am you. <laughs> We're exactly the same. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Well, like, let's unpack that a little because you talk about backing out of this burnout cycle and that sounds great. And it's much easier, I think, said than done. You know, I shared, and this is, this is real. You probably actually don't know this about me, but probably about six years ago now, I started really doing different body biohacks on myself because I, this was related now, fast forward, it was related to my implants, my breast implants that I had at the time though, I had all this stuff going on around inflammation in my body, thyroid issues, my adrenals being shot. Um, with that inflammation issues, weight loss issues. Now, there's many different things that impact that. So it's not solely that it was just my implants. You know, you brought up real estate. That is not a stress-free industry. That is like around the clock, a grind. It can be very stressful. As you know as well, I have a nonprofit organization that fights human trafficking. That's not one of those topics that's light and fuzzy, that is heavy, it's hard, it's very ugly. 
And this January, it'll turn 14 years old. So it's been a part of my life for a very long time. So there's many compounding things happening in my life. So when I think about somebody like myself around knowing my adrenals are shot, still trying to, and it is actually part of my healing journey of being in Costa Rica, is allowing my body and my nervous system to heal releasing a lot of the stress that I've carried and not just stress. There's, there's anger in my story. There's resentment in my story. There's hurt and pain in my story. Identifying myself as human again, as we're talking, right? Like we all can share these commonalities. So we can use me as a, as the Guinea pig on for our conversation today, because I think a lot of people can relate in one, one way or the other, how, what do you recommend to back out of this burnout cycle? What can I be doing? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, the stories that you share in your podcast episodes, I've listened to those and I actually didn't know that about you years ago when we met and I was listening to the episodes and you were, you know, sharing those, uh, those really valuable, I think, experiences from you and very vulnerable facts about yourself. I think that's, is absolutely amazing and you're you inspire so many people myself included so um and and you know i think everyone goes through this journey of this hardship this this mm -hmm. um different phases in life where we we're led to and I, I call it unpeeling the onion the layers of the onion right. and what sits in the core is ourselves is our true selves mm -hmm. we but instead what we do is give me more layers on this onion so i can feel more whole i can feel better i can feel you know um more human more complete however people you know think of it in their own minds but rather what is really missing is us the, you know, recognizing that we already have it all, just like what I mentioned earlier is the control, the validation and the, um, and the safety. So in terms of what you mentioned, you know, backing out of it and what I really advocate for people to do, and, and this is something that is so simple, but it's so hard to do. And this might even sound dumb to some, some people is sit with yourself, mm -hmm. sitting with yourself. Because, and this is something that is huge for me is I really value relationships with people, relationships with myself, relationship with my food, relationship with the, the place that I, I live in, relationship with the earth. And if you think about it, the reason why our nervous system is constantly overreacting is because we're always, as people know, in that fight or flight mode, in that sympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. dominance mode. Yeah. And if we are in a place where we trust ourselves <clears throat> to have the safety, to have the validation, to have the control, many times, I would say more than 99.9% .9 of the times and when I speak to people about this is they don't recognize that, you know, they've already lost that connection with themselves. Right. They're constantly seeking external sources. I need to make more money. I need to please this person. I need to please my partner. I need to do this. I need to do this. Everything is external. But when we sit with ourselves in silence without distractions, which is so rare these days, we begin to reconnect with ourselves. We mm -hmm. form that relationship with ourselves. We have that conversation with ourselves. Because imagine you and I, you know, trying to build a relationship and I'm constantly like on my phone, on my computer, watching TV, doing something else. I don't think we're going to have that good of a relationship. Totally. <laughs> right? You're not going to get your point across. I probably won't be paying attention to you. Even if I am, is is not my full, you know, genuine, complete attention. Yes. So in order for us to build relationships human to human, in order for you to trust me, to be there for you as a friend, as a colleague, as another human, I need to pay attention to you. I need to hear you. I need to be able to empathize. I need to be able to respond accordingly. Yes. So if one day you're like, D, I need your help. I'm in some 
you know, real deep trouble, whatever it may be. And I'll be like, okay, I'm here for you. I got you. And yeah. from there, our trust continue to build. And it can be something as little as, hey, can you c- come and help me take groceries? Because I'm just really sick today. It's so like something small like that. And totally. for me to respond, you're going to be like, okay, I can trust this person because she's got me. Yes. Same thing with our bodies. If I'm like, okay, well, I'm thirsty, or let's say I'm hungry, all I'm going to do is go out and get some fast food. Okay, let's just soothe you for the moment. And this is it. Yeah. Our nervous system is going to respond and say, well, actually, this is not what I needed, even though mm-hmm. consciously we're like, I just wanted some fast food. But our cells recognize that we need nutrients. We're lacking nutrients. And you're not giving me the nutrients I need. So, okay, well, I now have trust issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so... And I know this sounds so, might sound woo-woo to some people, might sound really simple, but it goes back to our nervous system response. Just like how the gut is related related to the nervous system, inflammation is related to everything. How we respond to ourselves is very much related to the choice we make every single day. The thoughts we have, the neurotransmitters that we fire on a regular basis, the hormones that get released, how our gut heals itself or rather have leaky gut symptoms that we, you know, that lead to more issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the biggest things is to back out of that burnout state is to literally just sit with yourself <laughs> and and listen and connect. You know, it's so interesting because just the other week, this is real life getting raw here for a moment with you. (laughs) I, I'm in Costa Rica. I don't have a primary resident in Toronto anymore. I'm here. I'm going back to make a long story short. There's a lot of stuff in my head that can be very overwhelming sometimes around where am I going to live? I don't have my vehicle when I'm there. I got to get a vehicle. Who am I going to be staying with? Anyways, all of this stuff. And I'm looking at, I have stuff in storage. I have stuff at my mom's place, at my dad's place. I have stuff at friend's house, other stuff in Prince Edward County. I was like, I get so freak right out right now. And there's this like overwhelming on top of everything else going on, right? Businesses, all, all everything else going on. And a girlfriend of mine called me that morning and she could hear it in my voice, this overwhelm. She's like, how are you? I'm like, I'm good, but I'm just a little overwhelmed right now. And she said to me, she's like, what could you do today to be with yourself, to take care of yourself? Now, my immediate response is I don't have time to do that today, right? I don't have time to do that today. And she's like, how can you just... Can you just find some space to relax and be with yourself and like tranquilo? I said to her, I was like, look out my window. My life is tranquilo. I'm looking at the ocean right now. I have an infinity edge pool. How much more tranquilo can I get until you really convinced I'm 70 years old and I'm retired? Right. I said, I can't do that. And she, this is what she said to me. And as you were saying around spending time with ourselves and not in the partner relationship, I think this is the easiest way for people to understand that what I'm about to say is she said to me, if somebody you were dating, your partner, your spouse said to you, I don't have time for that today, but I'm available on Friday to deal with your overwhelmingness, your anxiety, whatever it is you're going through. She's like, what would your response be? I'd be like, yeah, well, obviously it becomes obvious, right? You're like, well, that's not cool, especially if you're my partner and you can't take five minutes out of your day to be with me, to help ground me, help clear, recenter, do a body scan and go, what does Shay actually really need right now in this moment? And it's interesting because I think of people who are really actually uncomfortable with just being by themselves, like going to a restaurant. That's a great, great experiment. Can you go eat alone and not be on your phone or with a laptop to be like, I'm coming to a restaurant to do work and get a bite to eat. But can you just be with yourself and see what comes up? Right. And it's a very important practice 
to also, like, as you were saying, discovering like really who you are, because if you're not really hanging out with yourself and you're always distracted, whether it's through friends, business, events, the phone, laptop, Netflix, how do you really know what, who you are and therefore even like what you want in life as a bigger picture question, right? So I love that part of the backing out of stress and backing out of burnout is creating intentional time to spend with yourself. And I know without needing to ask you, because I've seen as well, like you talk about this on Instagram, but you have your disciplines in place to support and serve that sacred time of gratitude, meditation, whether that's journaling as well. And those are things of, of being with yourself. You know, it doesn't have to mean that you have to sit there and like literally do nothing. If you're going to do that, then you should just meditate, right? Like at that point, you should just meditate. But it's a really important reminder of like how we show up for ourselves to take care of ourselves. And if that was a partner's response in that time of whatever you're feeling, you're hungry. You know, you brought that analogy up of like what you're feeding yourself or not feeding yourself. And maybe if you thought of a mother figure as opposed to your partner, because maybe your partner's, not, it's not their responsibility per se to <laughs> you, but like a mom to a child that would just neglect when their child is hungry, you'd be like, yo, that's like child abuse. That is not okay. But when we do it to ourselves, it just gets dismissed as, oh yeah, I haven't eaten at all today, you know? So I, I think that's a really powerful reminder of creating this one-on-one -on -one time of intention and allowing yourself to have those resets, you know, as part of getting out of that burnout process, burnout cycle. So good. I love that. Dee, I want to ask you, there's this notion kind of going around of balancing hormones, balancing your nervous system, I have inflammation issues. I have stress. One does definitely does not help the other. I don't want to miss my workouts. I'm huge on moving my body daily. Doesn't necessarily always mean lifting weights for myself personally, but there's a fine line that I keep learning and hearing about that sometimes the type of workout or the length of workout is not necessarily serving my body if I'm in this state. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on that and how to best serve yourself in that way. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, I mean, they're, they're as a woman, it's such a blessing to be a woman, <laughs> but we're so complicated. <laughs> I love being a woman, but sometimes like, damn, yes. <laughs> this is complex. <laughs> totally. You know, we have what the men have. We have the inflammation. We have all these things. And then on top of that, we have the hormones. We have the monthly visitor and we have all these different things happening. So, you know, in terms of what you mentioned with the um, balancing hormone, with the um, inflammation. So in terms of Actually, let's back, back up a little bit. So in terms of burnout, so burnout essentially is there, there are different, you know, degrees of burnout It's a spectrum, right? So there's a mild burnout and then there's a burnout, which is um, for some, if you look up burnout, uh, there are places that actually say if you're in severe burnout, it might actually lead to death. It's a little scary, but it takes a lot to, to for death to happen, but um, essentially burnout is is you're in a state of you know imbalance as we talked about before your mm -hmm. hormones are out of whack things are you know thyroid issues might come up because your thyroid essentially is your thermostat you're right. maintaining uh, homeostasis within the body and all these different organs are malfunctioning because your hormones essentially run the show in your entire body so your mm -hmm. hormones are out of whack neurotransmitters are out of whack, the dopamine, the serotonin, everything's out of place. So one of the biggest things with burnout is, I'm sure you've heard of the adrenal glands and that sit on top of your kidneys. Mm -hmm. And every time, you know, 
uh, when people talk about burnout, they're like, support the adrenals, support the adrenals. Is It is very important to support the adrenals. But one of the things that we also want to think about is, you know, where are the adrenals at? Are they overworking? Are they underworking? Because sometimes in burnout, they can be underworking because they just don't have the ability to work anymore because they're just so imagine a person who's just dead, not dead, but you know what I mean? They're very, um, they're passed out. They're, they're tired. They're sleepy. They're, they're passed out. Yeah. So (laughs) that is a very strong word. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so they, they can't even produce any more work anymore. So they can't pump out their cortisol anymore. And they're, of course, the other side of the story where they're pumping out too much cortisol. So right. the adrenals still have the ability to, to pump it out. So in both cases, then you need to start noticing, you know, what your body's feeling after you work out. Because mm-hmm. for a lot of people, they feel very depleted after working out. Then that means you need to back off and do something lighter. Walking is a great way to to still move your body, still be able to, you know, get some fresh air, get your body moving, get your brain moving, get your blood flowing. Um, And you probably you shouldn't feel exhausted afterwards. But if you're feeling exhausted afterwards, it probably means that your adrenal are just shot. They're no longer, you know, Mm -hmm. operational. You really need to get them taken care of. Whereas, you know, if you feel like, okay, I feel that I can go and do some Pilates, I can do, you know, a little bit of yoga, I can maybe do some strength training, and I I should feel better afterwards, then listen to your body that way, um, in terms of, you know, how you feel afterwards, because going in for a lot of people, you got to drag yourself to the gym sometimes. And But, you know, during the process, if you feel this motivation coming in, if you feel better afterwards, then continue doing those things. But the last thing you want to do when you're really burnt out and you're feeling depleted, you're having a hard time sleeping, you're, you know, having a really hard time getting through the day, the last thing you want is going to to hit class or something that is really high intensity because then your adrenals are working overtime on top of what's already going on within your body. And in terms of, you know, the female hormone system, on top of this burnout situation, on top of inflammation, is you got to, you know, really ease off during certain parts of the female cycle. So during your period for a lot of people, you know, and one of the things that I always ask is, do you feel better after working out um, or do you feel worse? Because in Chinese medicine, there's something called the excess and there's something called um, uh, the, oh my gosh, I forgot the other word. Um, Essentially is too much and too little. So you're lacking or you're having too much. So um, for people who are excess and they need to exert some energy. So during the week of the period, some people feel better when they're, when they work out, right. otherwise, uh, sorry, other people feel actually worse when they work out. So those people are in a state of depletion, so they should go lighter on their workout. So that can be strength training, but when you're doing strength training in that period, if you're someone who is depleted, you want to make sure that you're doing longer periods of eccentric versus, uh, concentric so you're actually calming down your nervous system working with what your body has and then the week after your period is usually when women can go much much harder than the rest of the time of their cycle so usually when your period ends the next seven days you can go much harder you can do your hit classes you can go for long runs you can do all these things that really is taxing on the body but also because your body has the ability to exert your body has the ability to put out the work that it, you know, that is required in a workout. Sure. This is also the time you can take more carbs because your body can burn more. So, um, which means, you know, you're going to work out, you're going to burn more calories, carbs, whatever it is that you choose to eat. I'm not saying that you should eat junk during this time, just, you know, macros always um, shift as well during the cycle, as well as the workouts, as well as certain lifestyle um Uh, modifications as well so the two weeks usually before the period is when you know we want to start tapering down 
on the workouts, uh, start, you know, really replenish the body with high nutrients, with, you know, uh, a lot of mindfulness, a lot of sitting still, because we're building that uterine wall. And we want to make sure that the body has all the resources to get things going to make sure that we we give it um, the resources, the attention, the love and all these things um, to make sure that, you know, we have that um, essentially all the resources for the body to do what it needs to do. So interesting, because as you're explaining all of this, it's really making me think that doing one workout or a type of workout throughout the month, whether you work out three days a week, five days a week, you're moving your body every day of the week, that you should really be thinking about actually changing and shifting your workouts around your menstrual cycle from what you're saying, which is fascinating and does make sense because I, you know, I had a friend of mine years ago, she's very much around creativity and creating business around the cycle of a woman which I thought was so fascinating. I had never considered this before, but to follow parallel to what you're saying, you know, in the week of your period where your body is needing more love, wanting to retreat, being with yourself, this is the time to, on a business side, not be going out and doing speaking engagements, not be trying to like launch new programs or whatever you're doing in your business. This is a time to be inward maybe working more in your business, like on your business versus ovulating creativity. You have more energy like this. That's the time you want to be on stages. That's the time you want to be launching programs, doing like high vibe interviews, you know, and really pushing your yourself, but your business forward. So this is so interesting to bring this concept within fitness and work out and makes complete sense to me. Uh, so I love that. What a great takeaway to start thinking about not just carb cycling, (laughs) (laughs) you know, you know, changing how you're eating or how you're showing up in your business, but also how you're moving your body and shifting that. I want to ask you, is there a sweet spot or a recommendation for time and like length of workout? Cause you know, you hear, I used to be of the mindset. I still kind of am, I think Maybe we'll change this where I'm like 20 minutes to do a workout. Like, what are you actually accomplishing in 20 minutes? Like, I'm like just kind of getting into my sweat at that point, you know, sometimes depending on what I'm doing, but it's like, can, is 20 minutes effective? One, is there that sweet spot where you're like 30 minutes before, if you have stress in your body that it's overexerting and now maybe having a reverse effect? Is 40 minutes okay, 45 an hour? Like what what is that? What's the time frame that you mm-hmm. would advise or recommend for people to consider? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And that's definitely something that um there's a lot of information out there on timing, on the type of workouts, as you know, you know, it's really confusing. But what I would say is there is no, you know, one type fits all, unfortunately, and everybody's different. Everybody is different. Um, just like the food we eat, you know, I can be, I can be thriving on a keto diet and the other person is dying, eating all the fat. So, and they can be thriving on carbs and I'd be blowing up like a balloon animal on carbs. So, (laughs) so everybody is very different. Um, and the best thing to do is to, of course, if you're a woman really follow the cycle of, you know, your menstrual cycle, um, the ups and downs, the ups and flows and everything we, we do in life, you know, just life itself is a cycle. We birth, we die, you know, and then there's the rebirth. If you believe in reincarnations, um, there is the cycle, you know, that women have every, every month and everything's in, in in this flow of, um, of life essentially is what it is. So with that flow, really think about, you know, how your body feels during each stage of this flow, either from a month to month basis or from a year to year basis, because, you know, there's the, the childhood stage, the puberty, and then we grow as, let's just say woman here, you know, women go through the stage of, 
you know, 20s, 30s, and we start to get into this perimenopause periods and this menopause period, and then we don't have our periods anymore. And, you know, and then we start growing older at testosterone um, and estrogen ratios start at, you know, balancing out. So all these different things, uh, you have to take that into consideration when it comes to food, when it comes to working out. And what, you know, what felt really good in our 20s might not feel so great in our 30s. And then it is not even doable in our 40s sometimes. And I'm not trying to put limitations on, you know, our capabilities with the age, with the decades. And I totally believe, you know, I've, we've seen those 90 year olds who are doing like tons and 20s of pull ups, like good on her. Totally. And but we're not. But another thing to keep in mind is there the um, oh, my gosh, what's his name? The guy who is uh, a Navy SEAL, the bald guy. I just, I know I follow him. I don't know his handle, but I know who you're David talking about. David Goggins. Crazy. Yeah. David Goggins. So, you know, we look at people like that and we're like, how do you do it? Yes. And then there are people who I actually know people who try to do what he does. It is not possible, but we have our own powers. We have our own uniqueness to, to offer the world. So the same thing with our workouts. You know, some people might be able to thrive on a 20 minute workout. They can go really, really hard. And we do really 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 hard workouts i personally don't even think i can last 20 minutes there are workouts and i'm like i'm out after 15 minutes you know but if we do a long stretched out workout where you know as i mentioned earlier for example if we do a one second concentric phase and a four second eccentric phase when lifting that will probably take you an hour to finish your workout right. and if we just do a quick cardio session 20 minutes is, is done. Again, this depends on how you're working out, how your body responds to the working out, and how are you nourishing yourself in terms of food, in terms of thoughts, in terms of, you know, how you uh, plan out your days. Those are all sorts of ways to make sure that, you know, you are taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally, spiritually, um, to make sure that you're recovering and gaining from those workouts. Cause essentially we're working out for a purpose. Yeah. We're not just working out for the sake of working out. We want to be healthy. We want to live a long life. We want to, I don't know, get an eight pack if we, yeah. if we can. Right. So that's another thing is what is the purpose of your workouts? What are your intentions going in? Are you trying to get work on your cardiovascular? Uh, uh, system? Or are you trying to get bulkier muscles? Or are you trying to lengthen your muscles? So um, unfortunately, I don't have a one word answer to your question. Uh, there are just a lot of factors to consider. But uh, if I have to give one advice, it would be to listen to your body and see what feels good. You should feel like you're pushing yourself when you're working out and you were walking away feeling like, you know, what you said, I barely even broke a sweat. So yeah. gotta, gotta do a little bit longer or you increase the intensity if your body allows. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So going back to yourself is not nothing external. Always listen to yourself is going back to that connection piece again. Totally. And I think as well, you know, if you do, one thing the same always it starts to lose as is oh my gosh it starts <laughs> to lose its effect right yeah. because the body starts to plateau at that point because it's the same repetition it's that muscle memory so even just that in trying to figure out because i think of well how do i know what feels good to my body well the only way you know what feels good to your body is if you try something else to compare it and you have a contrast to be like, I did 45 minutes to 30 minutes. How does that feel? I'll tell you, this has been a really interesting exercise for myself unintentionally, but this is real to what we're talking about. So D, I I want to share this with you because I think this is a really interesting, unintentional experiment. I'm realizing I'm in when I am in Dominical in one area of the country in Costa Rica, I don't have a gym to go to. So I have equipment at my house and I do online workouts. Right now I'm do using Body, which is formerly Beach Body, And the program I'm going through is usually between 29 to 40 minutes workouts. When I'm in Nosada, I have a gym. I'm in there doing my weights. I'm lifting. 
usually not doing any cardio there. I'll use the beach, but I'm like just lifting and I'm in there for an hour, anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half. What I noticed just recently was my body feels more swollen. Mm -hmm. I feel thicker than when I had for the last like almost month and a half when I was doing just these 30, 30 ish minute workouts. So I came back here and I was like, huh, this is going to be interesting to see now a week before I go to Toronto back in the routine of doing it and how my body is feeling. Do I feel like I'm not holding on to water weight? I'm not inflamed. I think about stress in my body and everything you've shared. So this is what you need to do, right? You need to change it up because if what you're doing if you're wanting different results, you need to change what you're doing and try something different, right? And if you're doing what you've always done, you're going to get the same results. So this was like a really interesting exercise unintentionally. And so you brought up this fabulous point, which you guys need to try it, change it up, shift it up. I also think there's so much wisdom that you are sharing that you can clearly see the importance of why you need to work with somebody like D, because we are complex creatures just in general. And there is not one answer, one shoe fits all. And as much as you can learn and you should do your own research, go online, absorb what you can. This is why we have different experts in different industries. It's why you should use a realtor to go buy a home because you don't know what you don't know. You might know some things like you said, but I'm the expert versus you. So no different than me needing to come to somebody like you to say, where's my blind spots? What don't I know? I didn't go to school. I haven't studied the way you have. And let's create something custom for me. You are doing incredible work all around the world. You're like living your dream. You're on the Freedom CEO podcast for a very fitting reason. So I have to ask you this one question before I have to let you go because I value your time and we are going to have you back because I have so much other stuff I want to unpack with you, D. So when you think of becoming the own CEO of your life and taking ownership over your own decisions, how has that brought you freedom? Everything. <laughs> um, I think freedom is, you know, having control over our own life and not uh, being tied to the idea that someone else has implanted in my own mind mm -hmm. uh, thoughts that don't belong to me that I've been brainwashed to believe like so many things in our society right now in this moment. So the ability to decipher, first of all, which is mine and which is not mine is really important. And as you can attest to it, I'm sure Shay is that freedom is multifaceted is not just location is not just money is not just time is the freedom to choose is a freedom to think about what I want to think about is the freedom to travel and experiment and be able to use your body how you want to use it. So um, yeah, I think it's just been such an amazing uh, lesson and journey and, and all the challenges, the hardship with that comes with entrepreneurship is is so valuable. They're hard in the moment that you're like, I just want to get out of this. But you know, one step at a time, and when you get to the other side, and I can t attest to that, I've gone through so many times is when you get to the other side, and you're like, that was so worth it. It's like when you're hiking up the mountain, and you're like, Oh, this is so hard. I want to go back down. But then when you get up to the top, you're like, I am so glad I did this. 100%. Oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, connect with Dee. She's so amazing. Um, connect with her on Instagram. Get into the show notes. All of her contact information is there. And I thank you. Thanks for being here today and spending some time with me. And I cannot wait to have you back. And I need to see you in Toronto. We're going to make that happen. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me, Shay. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the Freedom CEO podcast. If you got value out of today's show, I would love for you to leave a review as it will help my show reach other people as well. You know what to do. 
download this episode, click the like and subscribe button. If you feel like spreading more love, pop over to Instagram and share today's show in your stories. Remember to tag Shane Vidiata and the Freedom CEO. My DMs are always open, so drop me a line. I'd love to connect. Until next time, keep owning your decisions to live a life of freedom. Live a life you love. Live a life you love.